I want to chat to you today around the thought of worship as warfare. I don't know if you've ever given this much thought, but we are actually in a spiritual battle. There's an enemy who hates us and is doing everything he can to take us out, whether by discouragement or failure or distraction. He doesn't care as long as it pulls us away from God. Ephesians 6 and 2 Corinthians 10 both tell us these things, that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil, that we don't wage war as the world does, and the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. And there's a story in the Old Testament that just illustrates this so well. There's a king called Jehoshaphat, and he's doing his best to lead the nation of Judah. But three nations decide to wage war against him at the same time. So he's not facing war just with one nation. He's facing war with three. He knows his people are about to get annihilated. So you can imagine when he gets the news how he feels. You can imagine the the pit that just opens up in his stomach, the cold dread that gripped him the moment he is told about what's to come. I wonder if you've been feeling like that lately. I know that for lots of people, the coronavirus has brought very real fears to the surface, not necessarily about your health, maybe, but about the health of loved ones. Maybe fear for your financial future, fears about your business, fears about job layoffs, fears about paying the rent or the mortgage or about staying afloat. Maybe you can relate to Jehoshaphat right now. Maybe you feel like there are multiple armies marching towards you from every side and it just seems overwhelming. I want you to see what Jehoshaphat did. 2 Corinthians 20, verse 3 and 4 says, Then Jehoshaphat was afraid. It's okay to feel fear, hey? And then he set himself determinedly to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. So the people of Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord, longing for him with all their heart. Jehoshaphat was afraid. So he set himself to seek the Lord. This wasn't what he felt like doing. This was a decision he made in the midst of the fear to seek God. He prayed, he fasted, he got into the presence of God. And as he prayed, he reminded himself and he reminded his people of the promises of God. He knew that his soul and the souls of his people needed reminding of who God was and what God had done. And he knew the power of declaring the praises of God into the atmosphere. So he stood in front of his people and he declared that God rules over all the kingdoms of the nations, that power and might are in God's hands, that no one can withstand God, that God has been faithful to protect them in the past. And he finished his prayer before his people by saying, we do not know what to do, but God, our eyes are on you. What powerful words. We don't know what to do, but God, our eyes are on you. When we pray prayers like Jehoshaphat prayed, even in the midst of our fear, when we begin to declare the power of God, when we begin to to praise his name, a bunch of things actually start to happen. Number one, the spirit world hears it. The demonic world is real, but it cannot stand against the power and the authority and the name of Jesus. When we declare the goodness of God, demons tremble. The spirit world is shaken, not because of us, but because of the power that is in his name. The second thing that happens is that our spirit hears it. There is nothing that shuts up fear quicker than reminding our spirit of the faithfulness and the goodness and the power of God. There is nothing that strengthens our spirit quicker than declaring the praises of our God. And the third thing is that the Holy Spirit hears it and heaven's armies get ready for battle. Isaiah 42 tells us this. In fact, verse 10 to 12, tell us to praise God. It says, sing to God a new song. Sing as praise from the ends of the earth. Raise your voices. Rejoice. Sing for joy. Shout from the mountaintops. Give glory to the, to the Lord. Proclaim his praise. And then verse 13 gives us God's response. The Lord will march out like a champion, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry and triumph over his enemies. See, God's response to our heartfelt praise is that he fights on our behalf. And this is exactly what happened with Jehoshaphat. The man of God spoke to King Jehoshaphat and said, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. 
So Jehoshaphat led the people out to face the army, but instead of fighting, they worshipped. They sang these words, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And the Bible says that as they began to sing and praise, God set ambushes against the invading armies and they were defeated. Right now, you might feel like you're being attacked from multiple different angles. You may feel gripped by fear and uncertainty. And I believe God is reminding us today that our weapons are not the world's weapons. Our weapons are praise. Our weapons are worship. Our weapons are the prayer of faith. Our weapons are prayer and fasting. And as we begin to wield these weapons of spiritual warfare, we are able to lead ourselves and our families into confidence in God's protection, confidence in God's favor, confidence in God's covering over our families, over our businesses, over our finances. As we worship, God fights our battles for us. So give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. See you tomorrow.